Hello everyone, my name is Miguel Greenberg and in this video I'm going to talk about testing a web application for performance. Um, a couple of weeks ago I gave a talk at PyCon UK and one of the slides towards the end of the presentation is this chart that you can see here. And uh, this is basically me using an example application under different web server configurations and showing how it responds to load uh, with increasing uh, number of client connections. Uh, I have also uh, done some measurements on CPU usage and on RAM usage. Uh, since the presentation from PyCon UK went on YouTube, a number of people were curious about the techniques that I've used to generate uh, this chart. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did this. Uh, so let's switch into my terminal and let me show you how this works. Okay, so I'm going to SSH into a cloud server that I prepared for this example. Uh, I have deployed an application on this server. It's already deployed. Uh, this is the uh, the example application from uh, from my Flask Mega Tutorial. Uh, so the application is deployed. It's running with GUnicorn uh, using a, an asynchronous server. This this is uh, this is what I did for uh, for the the PyCon UK presentation. Uh, so GUnicorn is running, and then Nginx is in front of GUnicorn. Uh, Nginx is configured to serve static files directly and it is also configured to uh, to handle uh, the encryption so there is an SSL certificate uh, that is uh, that is configured. Uh, when I test for performance I, I prefer to uh, to do a more uh, real world test if you will uh, so I will be testing uh, the uh, the SSL URL. I, I'm going to take an example SSL URL, uh, and the encryption and decryption is going to be included in the testing because it is going to be included when the server is used for real. Uh, so I prefer to do it that way to get a more realistic uh, request per second reading. Um, so uh, to to make it easy on the testing. Uh, I modified the application I created. Uh, I, I took one of the endpoints, the login endpoint, uh, which does not require authentication. And then I added some additional work on that endpoint uh, to make it more uh, more of a typical request, uh, but, but still be uh, outside of the authentication part. And this is to simplify the testing. So, so now I have a URL uh, that I can invoke and it, it does a little bit of work. It, it, it does some database queries. It generates a, uh, a page uh, with, with an HTML template uh, with some variables. So, so it's, it's kind of a representative of an average request. So, so this is the URL that I'm going to be testing for performance. Uh, the tool that I'm going to use uh, it's called Apache Bench or, or AB. Uh, this is an open source, uh, an open source tool from the Apache uh, group. Uh, you can uh, you can get uh, this tool for all the platforms. It's available on most uh, Linux uh, distributions. Uh, there are binaries for Windows. You can also get it on the Mac. So it runs pretty much uh, anywhere. Uh, so so the the command is called AB, uh, short of Apache Bench. Uh, and uh, uh, what else can I tell you? Um, the uh, the list of options for Apache Bench is pretty long. Uh, it, it sounds like it might be a, a very complicated tool, but in reality, I use only a minimal portion of this. Uh, so it, it's actually quite simple. So uh, let me show you an example. Uh, so one of the options is uh, that you specify how many clients you want this tool to, to simulate. You, you have to specify how many clients. So you can say 
for example, we're going to start with something small, 10 clients. And then uh, the next option, dash N, uh, specifies how many uh, total requests are going to be sent by this tool. Uh, so here I typically say the, the number of clients times 10. So basically we're going to have uh, 10 clients and each client is going to send 10 requests back to back nonstop. And then after all the 100 requests are sent, the tool will gather some statistics and then show a summary of the time it took uh, and how many requests per second were handled. Um, so uh, the last thing that you need to provide in the command line is the URL that you want to test. And this is going to be a GET request. And this is part of the reason why um, I'm using a URL that's simple, the, the login URL of my application which I uh, basically made a little bit slower and heavier by adding some random uh, database queries and uh, rendering of templates just to make it look more like a typical uh, request. So this is going to go to the fully qualified HTTPS URL because I want to include the encryption and decryption and, and uh, passing through Nginx, you know, all the end-to-end, -end, a, a more realistic way to uh, account for, uh, for how many requests per second uh, the server can handle. Uh, so auth login. So this is this is the command. Uh, one thing that I should mention is that uh, you may realize that I'm running the testing on the same server where the application is deployed. Uh, so so this is of course not a perfect way to test uh, because the the testing itself is going to affect, uh, more specifically, if I look for CPU use, the, uh, the this AB tool will take some CPU. So, so this isn't going to be perfectly accurate. Uh, now, running AB from home uh, is also going to be very inaccurate because then a lot of latencies uh, in the network uh, are going that are completely out of uh, my control will also going to skew the results. Uh, so th I, I usually do it like this. I, I ignore the, the little bit of noise that testing on the same machine causes. Uh, a slightly better solution would be to have two cloud servers connected via a private network. And then on one, you deploy the application and then on the other, you, uh, you run the testing. Uh, so so that, that would be a good idea too, as long as you do it on a private network. You don't want your packets to go through the open internet where the latencies uh, could be all over the place. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this. And this is going to send those 100 requests. And then at the, at the end, it's going to show a, a bunch of stats. Uh, but the number that I usually look for is the requests per second. So, so this is telling me that if there are 10 clients sending requests back to back nonstop, right? So, so this will be an absolute worst, worst case. Then this server handled 36 requests per second. Uh, so we, we don't really know if this is uh, a light load for this server or, or a heavy load for this server. So after I get my initial measurement, what I do is I repeat the command, but I double the clients and the number of requests. So now we go to 200 and we are going to see how the requests per second change. So, so now we have 36 for 10 clients. Let's see what happened with 20 clients. So with 20, we got 70. So what this tells me is that the server is having absolutely no trouble dealing with 10 clients uh, at a time. Uh, so, so now we know that with 20, it, it's about double the amount of requests per second that we've got with 10. So what we do next, you can guess, is we double the requests uh, one more time. So now we go to 40 and 400 requests. And we try again. We know we have 70 for 20 clients and we got 123, so again, kind of doubling the amount. So, so we, we know that we are still good and that the server is totally fine 
handling 10 and 20 clients. So for 40, we got 123. So we can double one more time. We go to 80 and we can see what happens now. So now you can see that things start to uh, not not be, you know, we, we're not getting double anymore. So we went from 123 to 139. So, so we now are sort of approaching the limit on what this server can do. So <clears throat> we can try one more time to double this. We can go to 160 and 1600 requests. And you are going to see that, that we are approaching the limit of what this server can handle. Uh, and we got 138. So, so basically we are at the limit. We can, just for fun, we can try one more. We can go to 320 and 3200. And we are going to see that at, at this point, we can increase the number of requests and the number of clients, but the server still handles the same amount of requests per second, which means that the server is at capacity. So the more uh, the more clients that join at this point, the more things take. But overall, uh, well, okay, so 149. So, so we got a little bit better there. Uh, uh, maybe we should do one more just to be sure uh, so so ba basically what I see here is that this server under this configuration can handle about 150 requests per second let's see if this confirms that You can see even the, the time it takes for the command to finish now it's uh, it's longer because now, now we are running this server at capacity. And we got 159, still a little better, uh, but you know we are at that limit. Uh, so what does this mean? Uh, if if uh, let me bring the uh, the chart again. Uh, so you can see the uh, the application in, in the way I have it right now uh, matches the green line. Uh, so you can see that it's more or less close to what I've got uh, today. Uh, so basically, I have number of clients as 10, 20, 40, and you know exactly what I did today. Each time, each step, it doubles the number of uh, of uh, clients. Uh, but it, it's important to realize. Uh, that this does not mean that this server can handle, uh, in this case, you know, I, I went up to 640. So it doesn't mean that we can handle 640 clients. It means that if all these clients, the 640 clients are all sending requests constantly, nonstop, all the time, then we can handle 640 clients and uh, we, we get about 150 requests per second. Uh, in reality, clients never send requests back to back nonstop. So basically what we need to do is we need to take the requests per second. So, so 150 or 160 more or less. And this is the number that's important. So if you get uh, more clients, uh, but they're not sending requests all the time, and, and then you get requests from different clients, you will still get this uh, average request per second. Uh, if you want to have an idea, uh, normally, I mean, if, if, if we say that, uh, for example, let's say that each request takes one second to be handled, it, it, it's just, just a, uh, a, a raw guess, right? So if we say that uh, on a normal application, uh, a client sends a request uh, once per minute, then that means that we can... Uh, that that if if the clients send requests once per minute, then to get this uh, this response of 150 or so requests per second, uh, we can have the 320 or 640 uh, 
client times 60 uh, because now uh, each client is sending one request per second instead of 60 under this assumption that a request takes one second to be uh, to be responded which is actually uh, an exaggeration normally requests take less uh, so so you can see that uh, with a server under this configuration you you will be able to serve thousands of even tens of thousands of clients uh, and uh, the server will have no problem handling the, the, you know that amount of load um, so uh, okay so now you know how I generated the chart uh, so uh, the other two things that I have to show you quickly is the CPU and the RAM and for this I have to I have to be honest with you, I eyeballed it. Uh, so what I did is uh, I, I had a second window running while I, I, I was running AB uh, on one window. On the other window, I was running uh, the SAR tool. This is a tool that reports uh, statistics, statistics about the system. Uh, so I had it running like this, uh, SAR that you are Two. And this shows CPU usage and memory usage uh, every two seconds. So basically I had this running on a window while I was running AB on the other window. And then I was looking at the two uh, red numbers. So we have this one is the CPU idle number. So, uh, so right now I'm not doing anything. So the CPU is 100% idle. And then this one is the percent. Uh, so so uh, just to, just so that it is clear, I had to do 100 minus this number to get the CPU usage. Right, this is idle, so it's the amount of CPU that is not in use. Uh, and then the memory used is the percentage of memory that's been uh, in use. So that is uh, th this number right here, which I took also eyeballing it while running the test on the other window. Uh, so that is pretty much it. Uh, this is what I did. Uh, and I hope this is useful. Uh, and if you have uh, different ways to do measurements, uh, th this isn't the only one, uh, but typically I'm interested in requests per second. So, so this is what I typically do. Uh, but if you have any, any other techniques that you would like to share, uh, you're more than welcome to comment below and let me know. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.